Hi guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, we'll use the Haka uh, as a point of departure today. Uh, I say point of departure and not the topic because we will be going on a little journey uh, with our point of departure, of course, being the Haka. So let's go. What will we, we be talking about? So first off, uh, we want to discover or talk about, not discover, uh, we want to figure out what is really, what is a haka. Uh, the video you saw was from uh, a wed wedding. Uh, that is, of course, one place that we can find a haka, but we need to figure out more. So, and then and then next, next point there, down there. Uh, why are they doing it? We want to figure out why would people uh, be doing hakas. And when we are looking at this, we will, of course, uh, look at some other people from the rest of the world and maybe even ourselves to try to figure that out and then finally we will be looking at we will be looking at this one Ooh. Uh, we will be looking at uh, this final point and that is could we learn something uh, we will of course be trying to learn something today as well uh, we do not only need to know that there is a haka that would kind of be I don't know what you would use that knowledge for maybe uh, you could uh, score some points in a quiz one day, but uh, we could certainly utilize this knowledge to improve our own lives And that is of course what we shall be trying to do today uh, Okay, let's go. So Coming up the Haka uh, on the left there. You can uh, kind of see a guy that is uh, doing a Haka uh, He is sort of like he has this angry angry look uh, on his face and he is uh, stretching out his uh, tongue uh, looking really scary over there and uh, that is of course uh, because uh, Hakka, the Hakka it used to be uh, a war dance uh, the Maoris used to do this dance before they went to war well, that's why they are looking so scary uh, today of course you saw it in a wedding so of course not all hawkers are related to war. It would be kind of awkward to do a war dance at a wedding. Uh, that doesn't sound too good for the future of this marriage. But it is a type of dance, and that is important uh, because the Maoris they have a lot of dances and several types of hawkers. And uh, this uh, type of dance is of course accompanied by rhythmic rhythmic chanting, as you heard. And uh, so it's not just uh, dance moves, it's also some uh, some chanting as well that goes along with it. Uh, and another place where this haka is used, it's on uh, the rugby field. Uh, for those of you that don't know, rugby is, looks, it's sort of like American football, uh, but cooler. Uh, you not wear any protection and it's a lot more fun. I used to play rugby before, it's a, it's a great sport, I recommend it. Uh, and... Uh, the, they use it on the national rugby team for New Zealand since 1905 have they done a haka uh, before each match start and that's sort of that's closer to uh, the war uh, <laughs> the war thing than, uh, than than in a wedding I would say but uh, of course hakas they come in a lot of forms uh, but another thing that is important for us to keep in mind before we move towards the next point is that it's really common in the Pacific. Uh, in uh, in uh, the neighbor island, uh, New Zealand's neighbor only, they have a, a dance that looks a lot like it. Uh, it's not called a haka though, it's called a hake. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, you can kind of see the similarity. You'll see it at once when they start dancing, but uh, uh, you, you can also hear it. Uh, so, uh, it's really common in the Pacific. If before it was related to war, but uh, not so much today, uh, because we have a chronic lack of war uh, in New Zealand. Hap luckily, luckily that's a good thing. And it used to be, used to be. Sorry, uh, it is a type of dance. It is indeed a type of dance, and that, that is important to keep in mind because uh, we will be treating it as such as we go along uh, today. So. Uh, yeah, it's kind of it's a dance. Uh, it's it's of course a special dance, but a dance nonetheless. So uh, on the next part here, we have 
uh, we also remember that it is a they use it for uh, the rugby team so it is utilized in a lot of situations today and even they have some school groups in the, the schools in New Zealand and, and they do uh, hawkers as well uh, as a part of their daily school routine so finally now we're getting closer uh, why why would you do a haka? Why would you do it? I, I'm not asking you uh, specifically, but uh, I'm, this is you as a, as an unspecific, <laughs> unspecific person. Uh, of course, you probably understood that already. But uh, why? Uh, anyway, why why would you do uh, would you do it? Why would you do a haka? And in a broader sense, why would you do these kinds of dances? Uh, that is what we were trying to answer on the next slide i didn't get to finish my coloring there but anyway let's move on so why uh why 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 i have already drawn something uh here because i want to uh <laughs> i wanted to remember why <laughs> and sometimes it's kind of hard so why uh first off uh you we need to answer this question because only then if we ask why and questions like that we would uh, truly figure something out uh, of course you can just notice oh they dance a haka in uh, new zealand cool cool and then move on with your life uh, and that's fine sure but uh, you haven't really learned anything you could just read that off a wikipedia page it's not no big deal no need to go to school to learn that uh, in the, in the time where you have internet so we will be exploring why uh, so that you actually learn something uh, valuable today okay so what we know is that this kind of dances as we alluded to earlier it's uh, it's done everywhere on the planet you can find it everywhere so uh, in norway for instance let's take that uh, as an example uh, we have folk dances in norway uh, to us they don't really mean that much uh, at least not to me uh, I was forced to partake in these uh, uh, folk dances when I was a little kid. I certainly did not enjoy that and it sparked a long time hatred for dancing that I still feel uh, today. I don't really like dancing but uh, there are some uh, kind of uh, folk dances in, in Norway uh, as well. Uh, as, as I said, I, I, they, don't, they mean nothing to me. Uh, I really don't care if people stop dancing the, these folk dances. Uh, I only thought of it as a hassle. So, and uh, we have other dances as well. We have break dancing and all kind of dances, but they are really mostly aesthetic, if you know what I mean. Uh, it looks certainly looks nice and looks cool, and it's fun to dance. Some people think, at least I don't, but some people think, uh, and and that's cool. Uh, but it, it's certainly different from the dances that they do in uh, in. Uh, New Zealand and as this guy is doing uh, in Australia he's from Australia this guy he's an Aboriginal uh, so they do these dances everywhere uh, no, not exactly those dances but they do dances everywhere that's my point there uh, and what is particular about these kind of dances they are indeed conveying a story uh, as you I, I'm just guessing now what that guy uh, this guy is dancing but uh, I saw the whole picture and it looks like they are mimicking an emu uh, and that is uh, sort of like an ostrich but uh, scarier uh, so uh, it, it is, it's a big bird and that's why they have the, these feathers and uh, the guys on the side there you don't see it I should probably have uh, the, the big picture there uh, but uh, uh, <laughs> they are let's see there you see Sorry, maybe I should have uh, had. So, see this guy here? He's sort of... He's sort of like mimicking the wings of the bird and... This guy over here... Or this lady, I can't see it actually. So, she is also mimicking like wings and stuff and they're wearing, they're wearing this feather. So, uh, I think that they are, uh, they are secretly talking about... Uh, they are secretly talking about the uh, talking about the bird story, I think. Uh, so, uh, in these native cultures, you usually see that uh, dancing conveys a story. Uh, how do you know that? 
Well, you know that because you can just ask them. Uh, it's quite uh, quite good in that sense. It's no mystery. You can just like, what was that dance all about? And you sh sometimes they'll just tell you. Uh, some of the uh, American Native Americans they have like dances that mocks uh, all the ritual rituals from the Catholic Church, and that's kind of quite fun to watch. Uh, it's just a parody, and they have some dances that uh, <laughs> tells them when to plant different kinds of uh, corn. Uh, that is maize. Uh, uh, super cool, very interesting. Uh, but it serves also as a kind of like a coordination uh, device, uh, as you saw uh, when I uh, <laughs> unravel, unre revealed uh, the guys there. Uh, if they were going uh, hunting, they would had uh, they would already be sort of in sync. They would uh, have some ideas like, okay, we're hunting. We are hunting emus. That is cool. Uh, maybe they they have a, a particular kind uh, of dancing that shows like they are uh, they are kind of practicing before the hunt and they're doing it through the medium of dance. So uh, you could could use it for coordination. And indeed, if you ask them, why are you doing this? Uh, just practicing coordinating uh, with my friends, getting ready for uh, for the big hunt. So. Uh, <laughs> That, that also is a big deal, and as we saw, this will lead me to my smooth into my uh, next point. Uh, if you're going to war, uh, you certainly would have a need to coordinate uh, with your mates. Uh, it is nice to know where the other guys are going to be, uh, and uh, it certainly helps out uh, <laughs> if you are, if you are actually going to fight something to have a plan. So uh, in a war sense this makes perfectly sense to do a dance beforehand because you need to practice right you need some coordination uh, it makes uh, perfectly good sense to do this kind of dance beforehand and also it is nice if you want to uh, convey a story before you go to war it's nice to you need to get pumped right you need to tell uh, all the people about uh, how cool and tough and scary you are, right? It certainly helps before you're going to do something scary uh, to get pumped, right? So dance is used also for this. Okay, so onwards to the next point. And this is where we sort of, uh, we, we, move, uh, we move a bit away from the dancing stuff and just talk about uh, other stuff that we can uh, use. Uh, and here is the next point. What can we learn? So we are finally approaching uh, the end of this uh, short, short uh, video. And what could we learn? Well, I have scribbled down uh, a difficult word to pronounce there, but it you, you said mnemonics. I do not know why they have put so many letters in that word. Uh, and I do not care to figure it out, but it's you, you pronounce it mnemonics. And mnemonics, that is uh, a way that is sort of uh, tools to help you remember something. Uh, and as we have talked uh, now about the dance, it is certainly a tool that helps you remember something. Uh, and why do you need this kind of tools, of course? Uh, well, you, you need them because you don't have writing, right? So you need to remember stuff. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of other ways to remember stuff, certainly. We all have our techniques. Uh, they are mostly really bad. Uh, uh, let's be honest, we usually spend a lot of time trying to remember stuff and we forget things all the time. Uh, and that is because since the Renaissance, in Western Europe at least, <laughs> We have not had any of these memory techniques. They were really common before uh, the Renaissance, that is uh, 500 years ago. Uh, but then they all disappeared when we got the uh, writing and uh, books. Uh, and so these so societies, uh, these old societies, we could indeed learn something for them because they have kept all these uh, mnemonic, mnemonic devices. They have kept all these mnemonic techniques. And uh, one of the most powerful techniques that you could use is one uh, that is called, it's just called the loci. It's it's from Latin, uh, an old language. The, uh, 
it is the technique that you use to place your memories uh, in a certain place, right? Uh, if you do not get fully what I just uh, said there, I have found a podcast where it is explained. So uh, the technique is basically that you uh, you imagine the a place, right? Imagine a place, a real place uh, where you've been, and then you put information on the different places and you make a story uh, as you go along. And uh, some of you have maybe already experienced that if you listen to a podcast or uh, an audiobook and uh, you walked. And then uh, five years later, you come by the same place and uh, you suddenly remember what was talked about in the podcast. That is not a coincidence. It has happened to me a lot of times and happens to a lot of people. People just mention it on the go. But uh, you can actually use this technique to create really powerful and uh, long-lasting memories. So uh, this is talked more about in the podcast that I have. I will be linking to you guys. And I want you to listen to it uh, to learn a bit more about the techniques. Of course, uh, you need to... Uh, you will perhaps need to study it a bit more before you can actually be able to utilize it for yourself. But uh, when you have listened to the podcast, uh, then I want you to go outside and try for yourself. Uh, and I will provide you with something to remember uh, and uh, something that will come in handy uh, later this year or hopefully later in your life as well, but, but certainly uh, later this year. So I'll provide you with something to try to remember. Uh, so you shall be trying to use this uh, uh, mnemonic, uh, mnemonic uh, <laughs> techniques that you learn about in this podcast that I will link to uh, on Teams. And then finally, I want you to try it. Uh, for yourself and see if uh, if it works uh, it should work that is uh, uh, it is uh, it has been proven that this works really well uh, by uh, some guys that won the Nobel Prize a couple of years ago so a, a little bit uh, a little spoiler alert there it uh, it works if you if it does not work well uh, then you are doing something wrong uh, of course, it is really easy to do something wrong if you haven't <laughs> had proper instruction and practiced a lot on it. So uh, it's not sure that it will work for work for you at once, but uh, we'll try. We'll try. We'll give it a shot. So uh, that was uh, all for uh, this video, and I'll post yeah the links and the instructions on uh, Teams. Okay. So uh, have a good day, and uh, yeah. Bye.